Keith, it's five minutes. I'm going to put the battery in. Could you please count us down five, four, three, two, one? Of course. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Do you have a favourite singer? Yeah, I do, Nilsson. Do you have a favourite author? Yeah, J.G. Ballard. Are you a big reader? Yes. Do you like cooking? Yes. Are you do a I good cook? Do I have to answer more than one word? <laughs> <laughs> Am I a good cook? I'm uh, capable. How would you describe yourself? Um, massive. In what way? <laughs> Around the waist. <laughs> Um, how, would you, how would I describe myself? Bullish. How would you describe yourself as an actor? Oh, I mean, having been studiously ignored by BAFTA all these years, I can only presume that I'm below par. You finished filming a crime drama series called The Body Farm? Correct. In July? That's right. What was it like playing a detective inspector? Oh, it's so different, darling. I mean, it was so different playing a detective inspector. I mean, I, I, I had to, um, what I brought to the part was, uh, was incredibly wearing for me, you know, having to, uh, having to find something deep in a person's psyche that I have no relationship whatsoever, because they're not human, you know, detective inspectors. <laughs> you're dealing the same with, as anything else. You're dealing with decomposing bodies? Yes. Um, I don't get to see many of them, I have to say, but my compadres, i.e. the people who work at the body farm, they do on a daily basis. How do you choose your parts, Keith? Money. Apart from acting, yeah. you've done a lot of different things uh, in your yeah. life. How do you see yourself professionally? What are you? Jack of all trades, master of four. And which four are you a master I'm of? I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about comedy. Is it fair to say that you started out as a stand-up comedian? In, in show business, yeah. Yeah. What did you start out doing outside of show business? Oh, lots of things. I used to be a coal miner. I was a lithographic printer, silkscreen printer by hand. I was a butcher. Um, I used to own my own little cafe in a squat. I done all sorts of things. What did you think you'd be when you were, say... I thought I always wanted to be a journalist. Why didn't you become one? Um, I, th I think because I was... I was told... No, that's not true. Um, because I was a naughty boy and lots of things got in the way. Like I didn't finish school, I went to Borstal Detention Centre, prison, you know all that stuff. You went to prison in the mid 80s for criminal damage? Yeah, yeah, that was, actually Alice and my wife was pregnant with Lily at the time, yeah. Your ex-wife? All right, if you want to be pedantic. No? Tell me about other things you've done. Well, let's go back quickly to the comedy. You're losing your thread now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> Do you enjoy doing that? Did you enjoy doing that? Um, no, it was... Uh, oh God, you know, it was cathartic for me. <clears throat> I never used to tell jokes, so it was always a performance. But I was lucky. When, when the comedy store opened, I'd been to a drama college, so I knew roughly that if you could hold an audience's attention, you didn't have to be funny. And I could hold their attention. So I wasn't reliant on jokes. But some would say it was a cop-out, but I'd say it was performance art. Do you see yourself as a performer? Yes. Yeah, in the truest sense of the word, yeah. Do you like attention? I, I, like, I like to get what I set out to get. Uh, and sometimes that means not getting attention. I mean, some of my most, in my memory, my most favourable performances have been when there's only been three people there. You know, like once I hitchhiked from London to Bristol dressed as a vicar and convinced everyone that picked me up that I was a man of the cloth. And that gave me more joy than most things. What's it like having children in the public eye? Well, I mean, it's only a five minute interview, so we do it very quickly. It was. It was very interesting that once they'd both been in the, pri in the public domain, they realised very quickly that and when I used to say what they write about me is lies, they started to believe that actually maybe it was lies because they realised that people write lies about them. You know. And you're talking about Lily, Alan... And Alfie, yeah. And Alfie. 
tell me before we finish about the singing. How do you look back at the days of Fat Les, one of the groups you were involved with? Fat Les was fantastic. I mean, you would never call it singing um, by any stretch of the imagination. Do you sing? No, I perform songs, that's what I do. <laughs> that's it? Yeah. <laughs> we went all over the shop, didn't yeah. we? No, you went all over the <laughs> shop. I went all over the <laughs> I shop. <didn't>. Oh. <laughs> Got through quite a lot, though, quite a lot of questions. It's fine. Good to see you. Pleasure. <laughs>